Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Fakel Show. And today we've got some interesting information. We're just going to do kind of a short uh, uh, information update, we'll call it here. And uh, what is this about? This is about foods with UV protective effects. Good time of year to talk about this. Everybody's out in the sun. Um, maybe, maybe not, I guess, depending on what's going on. Um, and so we need protection. And, um, you know, some of the protection that's out there has some chemicals in it, some bad stuff in it. So you got to kind of watch. There are some more natural sunscreens out there. But what can you possibly eat to help um, with this exposure and help with these effects? So this is what we want to um, kind of go over today. So kind of some some interesting stuff here. Let me just situate all of this. All right. Get to this. Okay. All right. And so, um, you know, based on some some evidence um, that's out there in the research, um, there's certain foods that can not only aid the skin, but are more what they call photoprotective uh, or the ingredients in them. The, the nutrients in them are what they call photoprotective and um, photo, of course, meaning light. Um, and so, of course, the sun and, and, and just helping to protect against ultraviolet radiation. You know, radiation is kind of interesting because you can't see it. Um, how does it affect us? It, you, it's not like if it gets on your skin, you can see it. Um, if it gets in your body, you can see it. You know, when they take an x-ray, when you're at a computer screen, um, you're being exposed to ionizing radiation. You get radiation off your cell phone. You get rad so many sources of radiation that we don't even think about through the day, but it actually is very harmful. But especially the sun's radiation can create problems if, if you get overexposed or especially if you get burnt. Um, if you get a sunburn, that's not good. You just got, you know, you're getting radiation burns. Um, so this is not good. So what can you do? What can you eat to possibly help um, offset this? So one of the um, things that you can eat that I'm going to put up here first is, everybody know what this one is? All right. This is called guava. Is there, I, to tell you the truth, I've never really had much guava in my life. Um, so guava is kind of interesting. Um, you know, I don't know even if I've seen it much at the regular grocery store. I may have seen it at some of these more specialty grocery stores. Um, but, you know, when uh, with guava, it's kind of interesting. You know, it is, of course, a tropical fruit. Um, one thing about it is it is basically overflowing with vitamin C. Um, in fact, you know how they have the government's recommended daily value of uh, vitamin C. Well, this surpasses that by about 419%. Um, so it's very rich in vitamin C. And vitamin C, um, of course, very high in antioxidants um, and these photoprotectants. Um, and so we definitely want this. Now, just a kind of a side note on vitamin C, you know, I would say the um, official dietary recommendations on vitamin C are about like 90 milligrams for adult males and 75 milligrams for adult females. Mm, those are very low. Um, you know, you definitely, especially with everything going on now and that we need our immune system for being good, higher levels of vitamin C are very important. And really a lot of this you can get through your diet. That's the thing is you can take a lot of these vitamin C's, but they can end up uh, not even absorbing very good. But if you do food source type vitamin C's, you're absorbing pretty much every bit of that. Now, another thing that I do have to say about vitamin C, since I'm off on this side note real quick here, is vitamin C, sunlight destroys it. So let's say you're walking down the grocery store aisle and you see a bottle of orange juice and it's got a clear bottle where the light can get through. There's no vitamin C in there. The vitamin C got destroyed who knows how many days ago. Yeah, vitamin C has to be protected. And that's why, again, if fruit sets out, it will start to, you know, uh, it starts to go bad um, pretty quick there. So um, especially if it's already cut open and things like that. So vitamin C, yeah, we it needs to be protected. And also these, we, in fact, there's a supplement that we use here in the office. I, I really like the brand. It's a whole foods vitamin C. And, you know, on the label, 
it'll say there's only like maybe 300 and something milligrams of vitamin C in it. But since it's a whole food C as opposed to a synthetic vitamin C, if you take that 1000 milligram synthetic vitamin C, you're probably only getting a small percentage of that because number one, synthetic is not going to absorb or work as well. The body's got to utilize it a little differently. But number two, yeah, the absorption factor there is, is not good. Now, when you get into a vitamin C that's a whole foods, a pre-digested type, um, yeah, you're going to absorb every bit of it. And you could really add a zero onto the end of that where it says maybe 339 or something milligrams. You could probably add a zero onto that and it'd be more like 3,339. So um, kind of interesting, just side note there about the vitamin C that you may be taking and also liposomal vitamin C's do a lot better at absorption uh, also uh, along with the whole foods vitamin C's. So, um, and also another note on vitamin C, it helps to uh, the body to produce more collagen. So very important uh, to keep vitamin C, but guava pretty darn high in the vitamin C, which is again, antioxidant, photoprotectorant. Um, so eat the guava. All right, what's another one? Um, that can help us out here. Let me see if I can get this up here and let's go to, all right. Does everyone know what this one is? Sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. All right. Um, although one thing about this is the raw, the more raw these things are, the more nutrients they have in them. As you start to cook fruits, well, fruits, I guess you can cook fruits. As you cook vegetables, you start to lose some of the nutritional value, especially vitamin C. Um, but sweet potatoes, a little different. I mean, yeah, they've got vitamin C. And in fact, sweet potatoes many times are called the perfect food, um, kind of a superfood, because they are just loaded with nutrients. Um, if you had to live on a deserted island, make sure you have sweet potatoes, because that would probably be one of the best things you could do. Now, sweet potatoes have what's called beta carotene in them and the lycopene, um, uh, you know, and that's really what gives them that, that strong color too. But these are very strong antioxidants. Um, and they really give you that protective shield, I guess you could say against those UV rays. Um, and then of course that beta carotene turns into vitamin A, um, uh, you know, which of course vitamin A is interesting because that has been shown to reduce sunburning or the effects of sunburns. So vitamin A important. In fact, we talked a little more about vitamin A in our last video on osteoporosis. So get, make sure you're taking your vitamin A, uh, very important. And, and again, we can talk more about that too. Um, now also that beta carotene, that vitamin A helps the body to produce what's called melanin, um, which helps protect, of course, the skin from sun exposure. And, um, you know, the starch that's in potatoes, it's thought that it helps to kind of draw the heat out of the uh, skin. Um, and that's why, again, you could actually take your potatoes and you could use them topically. You can use your sweet potatoes or even really a regular potato that has probably a little more starchy effect. You could rub it on you and uh, that can soothe the sunburn. So if you didn't know that, kind of an interesting fact there. Um, all right, so what's the next one on the list here? Everybody knows what this one is, yum. Strawberries. So strawberries, um, strawberries do a lot of things. It's kind of interesting, um, but they also can work as natural sunblock. Um, and they have a high percentage of vitamin C too. Um, but again, um, they, they have this acid in them. It's called like elagic acid or something like that, um, which helps again with free radicals. Um, it reduces um, some of the pigmentation damage done by the sun. So if you have areas on your skin that maybe have are hyperpigmented because of maybe too much sun exposure, then uh, maybe try to um, put some strawberry on it and eat more strawberries um, and see if that uh, helps. Um, I'd be interested to know. I've never tried that myself. Um, and um, again, also that photoprotective effect in the strawberries. So uh, there's actually some some research on on this with the with on all of these really. Okay, so let's go to our next one here on the list, and that is green tea. 
which isn't really a food, but again, green tea. Now, the thing about green tea is it can be used not only internally, but also externally. If you use green tea externally, it helps to soothe sunburns also. Kind of interesting there. Um, and, you know, green tea is just loaded with antioxidants um, and really has many healing benefits. Um, in fact, green tea can aid in uh, relaxation, um, uh, blood pressure, um, detoxification to a degree. Um, and actually interesting about green tea is it's supposed to, from the research, actually help from its antioxidant level repair at the cellular level uh, when cells have been um, damaged. And then it also has these, um, what are called catechins in it. It's word catechins. Um, these are actually antibacterial. So um, of course, another benefit and also green tea is more of what we call a TH2 stimulant. So it affects the inflammatory side of the immune system. It helps to kind of get inflammation under control. So I guess you could say it's more anti-inflammatory. And then of course, green tea has vitamin B2 in it and vitamin E in it. And um, both of those kind of hydrate and um, protect the skin. So green tea is pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, let's go to our next one. Oatmeal. All right. Some people just love oatmeal. Now, I would like to qualify this. If you are one of our patients, you may know this in that um, oats and wheat are hauled in the same trucks. They're usually grown near each other. They can cross contaminate. If you have a gluten issue, if you're gluten intolerant, um, then you may be cautious with eating oats. Um, there are many people who just have a problem with oats. Um, and then um, there's this cross contamination issue. Um, and then also you want to try to find oats that of course aren't smothered in herbicides and pesticides. So, um, but oatmeal, uh, of, uh, most people know this can soothe the sunburn. So um, it, it does have a lot of antioxidants in it. Um, it actually oatmeal is also antifungal. So if you have a fungal issue, rub some, some oatmeal on there. Um, it has these what are called saponins in them in it which are kind of free radical scavengers um helping actually the immune system um and to get inflammation under control um and also supposedly by you know using oatmeal to boost the immune system that could potentially result in regenerating skin faster um but usually you'll mix the oatmeal with some water and rub it on the skin. That'll help with, with sunburns. So kind of interesting oatmeal, another one uh, to go on here. So let's go to our next one on this exciting list here. So cucumbers. All right. Everybody likes cucumbers. Cucumbers um, are interesting because one thing they do is they help the body to produce collagen. Um, collagen is pretty darn important in maintaining um, the protein of the skin, um, although about 96% of a cucumber is water, um, cucumbers are very hydrating. Uh, and this, sometimes you'll see people cut up the cucumbers, put them over their eyes or put them on their skin. It's hydration. You're, you're directly hydrating areas and then you're adding some vitamins and minerals onto it at that. Um, and sometimes people will do those, um, uh, well, I won't get into that. But um, another interesting thing is the outer peel of the cucumber, the skin, I guess you could say, that you kind of throw away, um, that actually contains what's called silica. And uh, silica actually firms up the skin. So if you peel all the skin off your um, cucumber, put it on, you might be saving a trip to the um, cosmetologist or, or whatever there, but definitely. And then also cucumbers um, contain, of course, vitamin C, um, uh, potassium, vitamin K. Uh, vitamin K is great for the skin and for your blood vessel health. So you don't get broken blood vessels, broken capillaries, people who bruise easily. Um, also cucumber can be great for soothing a sunburn also. And um, uh, 
and also potentially if you're getting these high amounts of antioxidants from the caffeic acid in them, that's supposed to reduce the damaging effects on your DNA from the sun. So kind of interesting. So also cucumbers. All right, what's up next? Okay, tomatoes. Tomatoes, yum. A lot of tomatoes being grown this time of year. Now tomatoes, kind of similar to strawberries and that um, they both contain what's called lycopene, uh, which is um, kind of red in its color. Um, but also this is an antioxidant and you know these antioxidants again oxidation is like rust it's like if you if your car has rust on it that's oxidizing if our body's oxidizing yeah it's getting damage to it and we can see the effects of that with aging so we want antioxidants to protect us and also these tomatoes the vitamin c in there and the um, antioxidants will be anti-inflammatory too. And um, now tomatoes um, also have been shown to mitigate sunburn uh, in animals. They haven't really documented a lot on humans, but tomatoes, again, that lycopene that's in there is pretty darn high compared to anything else. So tomatoes can also be really good. All right, and good to eat. Okay, so what's up next? Everybody's favorite is watermelon. And watermelon, you know, a lot of times we, you know, we don't think of watermelon as this super healthy food. In fact, watermelon is about 92% water. So you're really hydrating yourself when you're eating watermelon, which is great because you want to keep the skin hydrated. So a hot summer day, the sun's beating down on you eat that watermelon to, to keep that hydration going. And also uh, watermelon contains vitamin A, vitamin B6, vitamin C, all important skin healthy nutrients. Um, and the watermelon, just like tomato, contains that lycopene, um, which is great, uh, protectant. And then also um, watermelon also contains arginine. Arginine is an amino acid that helps for with helps with blood vessel dilation, so you get more blood flow to areas. And um, you know, you do all these things together. This can aid in that photo protection. And if you get more blood flow to your cells because of the arginine, then you're increasing circulation and you're increasing the healing effects. And and of course, um, getting that to the skin pretty darn important, pretty darn good. All right. And then we will get to the last one. We need a drum roll here. The last um, food on the list. Can anybody guess what it is? All right. It is carrots. All right. Carrots. Yes. So carrots, very high in beta carotene or which turns into vitamin A. We won't get into the story of taking beta carotene. I'm not a big fan of supplemental beta carotene. Definitely need vitamin A uh, to actually do the job. But when it's from foods, it's a totally different story. Your body converts it properly. Um, beta carotene, of course, reduces inflammation. Um, and, and, you know, of course, carrots high in vitamin C. Um, and these carotenoids, um, they actually signal gene expression, which can help protect you at that DNA, RNA genetic level. Uh, see, because again, when radiation affects you, radiation from the sun, radiation or different things, it doesn't just affect you generally, it affects you at a cellular DNA level. That's why, you know, large amounts of radiation cause cancer. They alter your DNA, they alter your RNA. So again, um, we need protection against these things. And so, so think of it more as, as radiation. Now, again, is this everything you need when you go out in the sun? No, no, you, you have to be reasonable about this too. You need to protect yourself um, from, the, uh, from the sunshine also. Oops. Change this back. All right, you need to protect yourself from the sun also. And again, there's, there's many uh, formulations out there, sun cream, sun lotion, suntan lotions. Just be careful with what you use. Look at the chemical list. You can look those up online. There's a lot of what we call safe ones out there. Though some of the more natural ones, a lot of people say, hey, they don't work as good as the other ones. Yeah, 
and they probably wash off easier. But I think they're, you know, they're trying to change that more and more. But again, maybe just find the lesser of the evils if you really have to. Um, and there's even some more interesting information out there on SPF and how really true SPF can only go above a certain number. Um, but um, yeah, so be careful in the sun, eat plenty of these wonderful uh, things, and um, but do enjoy the sun because there's a lot of great benefits to that, especially with your vitamin D. And if you're outside, you're usually active, which is great for your health overall. So I hope everybody enjoyed this today. Uh, God bless. And um, I wanna thank all of you that are uh, watching today. All right. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful uh, weekend.